Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagodha Chatterjee from Vijisom IIT Kharagpur who is taking this course. We are in week 8 and in this week we will be discussing about recency, frequency, monetary and market basket analysis. So, we are actually continuing our discussion on retail analytics and that is where these two things are mostly used. Uh, these are two different concepts probably a little bit older concepts, but still heavily used in, in today's world also at least in the when we do simple analytics, we, when we do not focus on a lot on predictive and etcetera, when we keep our try to keep our life simple, but still meaningful or fast. Uh, in those kind of situations, we generally use RFM and market basket analysis. So, initially uh, on this particular week, first we will discuss about RFM recency frequency monetary analysis and the later part of this week that means in the later videos we will talk about the market basket analysis. So, first the recency frequency monetary analysis. Now, this is a analysis technique which is used generally to uh, as, as a tool to segment customer. So, before uh, we discuss this I have in a previous video I have discussed that there are various types of segmentation that you can do for a customer that those can be like uh, demographic, geographic, attitudinal or psychographic and then behavior. So, behavioral uh, segmentation is majorly focused on persons behavior how they are expressing themselves, how uh, uh, in the in the behavior that they are doing or other places. So, now here in marketing analytics what we will be doing is in the context of retail mainly or in the context of many other service business, we will focus on these behavioral analytics and uh, behavioral segmentation and we will actually focus on a specific part of behavioral segmentation where people are giving their purchase behavior as the variable and that is the variable that we are using for further analysis and segmentation of the customers. Now, why that is needed? Why do we have to segment into segment our customers based on uh, their purchase behavior? Because purchase behavior is the most I would say uh, a behavior which the consumers cannot specifically hide that is the most crude raw version of their behavior that you can see. You might not be able to see uh, from the data that you have that whether the consumer has uh, seen your advertisement or what is the preference pattern of the consumers or which kind of movies you watch, which kind of uh, uh, probably which kind of uh, uh, websites you visit and from where the traffic is coming a little bit of vague idea you can get about the customer from the data that you generally collect. But very concrete, very strong behavior that is available with you is from the scanner data. Scanner data means uh, the data that you can collect based on the customer purchases. For example, in a retail store, uh, when you check out, let us say you have bought 4 or 5 products and you are planning to checking out right now. So, you go into the billing counter and the billing counter guy scans your products one by one. So, the whatever data has been created from that kind of a scanner is called scanner data. So, that is basically one individual's purchase data. I you do not have anything else about that individual probably while he registered for the card, the loyalty card, you might have a little bit of more idea his name, his email ID, his phone number, his address, his family members name, family members number at max some basic details you have, but that purchase data is actually the data that you can use further to create an idea or 360 review about the customer from the purchase point of view and that is why that that behavioral the purchase behavior becomes very important factor. Now, next decision point that comes into this picture that what in this purchase behavior will I focus on. So, if I if I have customers purchase history what exactly will I focus on? Will I focus on how much groceries he bought, how much apparel he bought, how much FMCG products he bought or whether I will focus on how much is the total monetary value of their basket or will I focus on how many units, how many different types of SQs he bought. 
what exactly will I focus on? So, researchers went ahead and, and did lot of research and found out that, that there are certain aspects of their purchase behavior, there are lots of characteristics that can be created from the purchase behavior, but there are certain aspects which better predict the profitability of the customer than other aspects. So, those are the aspects that primarily they found out and put them, these aspects are called recency, R stands for recency, F stands for frequency and M stands for monetary, these three things and I will explain what these things are. So, my presentation will have an introduction, what is RFM, RFM analysis, how it is done, procedure and then RFM for measuring performance of salesperson. So, we will actually show that for two salesperson how you can use RFM to know what is the performance of that particular person and there are certain insights of RFM we will talk about how, why in the industry RFM is important and etcetera and at the last we will talk about the alternative RFM measures. So, these are some of the details that we will be covering in this current particular presentation. Now, introduction. So, suppose you are a maths teacher of class 10 and you want to evaluate performance of the students in the semester test which was taken recently to evaluate whether they are ready for final exam or not. So, you want to know that whether your students are ready for the final exam or not. So, you have taken a test. So, this is something that we all probably have given at various points of time. Now, the question is the next thing is why are they weak? This is something that we also want to know that in which aspects they are weak and which aspects they are strong. And you also want to know how you can improve their performance. So, these are the major goals that you have. So, why they are weak, why they are strong, who is weak, who is strong and how you can improve their performance. So, keeping that as the goal you are trying to do something. So, what will you do? So, while selecting the good students, if you try to select the good students whom you will send it to some Olympiad exam let us say and the bad students whom you should focus on a mode for their educational purpose and etcetera, some of the things that you come that comes to in your mind is probably if you are a professor or a, or a teacher, then where the students has attended the classes recently. So, how recently they have attended your classes. If they very recently they have attended your classes, then they are more, more accustomed to you or probably they are more attracted to you or they are, t you means your teaching and then they are, uh, they are probably more uh, receptive of your whatever teaching uh, ideas or whatever this thing you will give, they will be more receptive. So, that is something which is recency, recency stands for recent it comes from recent, how recent it is. So, students have had a, attended the classes recently. Then the second aspect that becomes important is whether students have solved problems of homework. So, the homework that you have given in what frequency, not whether actually in what frequency they have solved, how many of your class tests, how many of your quizzes, how many of your problems that you have given to them, they have worked on that. So, that stands for frequency. And the last one is monetary, where students put enough efforts to learn about the subject. So, whether they are spending enough amount of time. So, that is also related to monetary. So, there are three aspects that is why one is recency, one is frequency and one is monetary, which can be uh, which can be told in the context of st uh, a student giving giving exam and etcetera like this. But we will actually focus on extend this kind of an idea in a, in a, in a better form as we go ahead. So, to evaluate this problem you will simply do a segmentation of students and then by using data as well as intuition you will evaluate good as well as bad students. So, this is something that you are going to do. Now, this is the same method that a marketing manager will use for the customer. Similarly, to strive in the present customer driven economy, so now the economy is driven by customers, 
proper customer insights are necessary to gain. So, you have to know who your customer is, what kind of things they like, they are, they are in, you have to gain insights about the customer. Then only by improving user experience, establishing a long term relationship between customer and company is possible. So, the only way is to create a very good user experience, very good product experience and etcetera. So, in order to survive with tough competition, development of innovative marketing plans for a customer and serve them to the highest, uh, the height of desired satisfaction is must. So, to do all of this thing, RFM is required. So, that is the basic premise where RFM is defined. So, you have to make your customers happy, you have to know your customers and all of these things you cannot do for all your customers. So, you should focus on those customers who are more profitable as simple as that. So, RFM is a simple and intuitive technique for segmentation of customers and has been used by, 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 by marketing managers for decades. So, let us see what is RFM. So, this is a segmentation technique because you cannot handle everybody, you are actually creating a segmentation technique where you are breaking the customers into multiple groups and you are saying that okay, I will only focus on the, uh, on, uh, on the uh, groups which are more uh, I would say profit making and I will not focus on those groups which are less profit making and this is how you are making sure that the more profit making guys who are making them more happy, they are having long term relationship with you and by keeping that long term relationship with you, you are making more profit. So, as simple as that, but basically RFM is used for segmentation. What is RFM? RFM is a marketing technique used to analyze customer value and there are three things. RFM stands for as I told recency, frequency and monetary. Recency stands for when did customers make their last purchase. Frequency is how often customers make their purchase that means a customer who buys quite frequently even if small small amounts, but if he buys quite frequently then that is something that is very important. So, for example, remember so, you, you get, get push notifications in Ola, Uber and etcetera, when will you get these push notifications? You remember all the coupons and offers and push notifications comes to you when there are two cases when it comes to you. Let us say if you are a new customer and you have just used now, for the next further usage they will put. So, that is a recency. So, you have recently used, they are putting some offers so that you further use. Now, let us say when will they send offers irrespective of your recency. That means, even if you have bought quite lot the time back, let us say one year back you have used, still they will send you an offer when, when your monetary component or frequency component were high. So, let us say in the last year, let us say in 2018 or 2019 early, you were spending quite a lot of money on Ola. So, you were, you were actually uh, commuting over on Ola and then you stop commuting. Now, this guy in December 2019 or January 2020 or, or early 2020, this guy will actually identify that okay, this guy last year he was, one year back he was using, now he was not using and how will he identify? He will identify based on frequency and monetary. So, how much money you have spent on Ola, how much money does the customer spend on Ola? In, in, in and how many, how often does customer make the purchase which is frequency. So, when all these three things happen, that is the sweet spot where the highest value of customer. So, the more recent, more frequent and more monetary spending, monetary expenditure is high, that is the sweet spot that every company is trying to get. So, that is something that is there. Now, what is RFM analysis? So, I understood this is RFM, the meaning of recency frequency and monitoring, but what is the analysis? RFM analysis helps companies to take decisions on promotions and offers for selected customer base. So, you do not send a email which is you send targeted emails, you do not spend send emails to everybody, you do not do mass communication to everybody because if you do mass communication the cost is much much higher and the probably conversion ratio is much smaller than when you do very targeted marketing, but targeted marketing is not so easy, you have to gain lots of data so that you know whom to target 
and then you have to have an analysis technique to find out some insights from that data. RFM analysis is one such uh, insight generation technique. It is a method which helps companies to find ways to improve customer spending. So, you know, so you have to increase your ROI of customer spending and RFM will help you. It is a useful technique to track lost customer base. So, whoever is lost, whoever is lower in RFM score, you can also track them and give them incentives to purchase company products. Just like I told that last year you were using Ola, last year many people were using Ola who have stopped using now. Now, let us say 1 million customers or 1 million is a very big number, let us say 50,000 customers or 1 lakh customers were using Ola last year who have stopped this year. Now, they cannot send their offers to all these 1 lakh people, whom do will they send? Everybody has bad recency, so they will focus on frequency and monetary. So, at the end of the day RFM is used to not only create a good ROI of your advertisement expenditure, but it also helps to find out that whom to target out of those customers who have gone away. RFM analysis helps companies to track the customer base and build a relationship that can increase sales and productivity. So, ultimately you have to create a relationship which will lead to sales and productivity and it also you also useful to identify and track minimum losses. So, these are basic RFM's needs. What is the procedure? There are multiple procedures given by many people. The most common one is something that we will discuss here and we will run that also in our R code in the next video. But I will also give you an idea about the other ones, other types of RFM analysis that is there in the market. But here we will use the easiest one. So, it is saying that divide the customer base into 10 equal customer groups. So, if I break my customer base into 10 equal customer groups, basically I will get 10 deciles. Now, based on what, based on what will I break? So, give recency, frequency and monetary scores on the scale of 0 to 9. So, remember, so what I will do? First, I will take the data and sort it based on let us say recency, the first thing then top 10 percent of recency will be getting a score of let us say 9, then 10 percent will get 8, then 10 percent will 7, 6, 5, 4. As I come down 9 to 0, each 10 percent will get that kind of a score. So, I will just write down 9, then 8, then 7, I will create another column and I will write down the top 10 percent guys. If they, you have 1000 people, then top 100 guys are 9, then another 100 is 8, on the 107 and so on. Now, with this new data set you again sort, now sort based on frequency and do the same job 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 up to 0. Again sort based on monetary, so 3 times sorting, last sorting based on monetary and again give 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 up to 0. So, score 0 means least favored and whereas 9 means most favor. So, this is something that you have to understand. Now, there is nothing called recency. We do not measure recency. We measure basically the date of the purchase and current date what is the distance. Now, the distance the smaller the better. So, here that distance variable when we create, we will create a increasing order sorting. On the other hand for frequency and monetary the higher the better. So, I will create a decreasing order sorting. So, remember this is some basic new senses that you have to keep in your mind that 0 means least favored. What is least favored? High distance, high purchase time distance from today that is least favored, low frequency is least preferred, low monetary is least preferred. Similarly, what is most favored? Those are the stuff that you give the score of 9. So, most recent customer will come into R score 0, second most recent customer will get, get the R score 1 and so on. Actually, uh, most recent customer will get a 9. So, this is wrong actually, this one I have written wrong, this one will be 9 and this one will be uh, will, will be 0. So, 9, 8, 7 that is how. And then, continue scoring, alting all groups receive the score 
and prioritize with the levels of. So, now this here is something now I have given the score you got a recency score, you got a frequency score, you got a monetary score. So, how will I get your ultimate score? There are different ways. One is if by chance if you so, so that will uh, uh, talk about that later where how to put weights, but for example, now I am putting 100 weight to recency, 10 weight to frequency and 1 weight to monetary. Why 100, 10, 1? I will show you why. So, if I give 100 weight to so, let us say this is recency. So, recency these are the scores the same there are 6 people who got some scores on recency, then some scores on frequency and some scores on monetary not necessarily a guy who has high recency will also have high frequency. Sometimes it might have not happen for example, this guy his <coughs> recency is 2 and 1, but his frequency is very high monetary is also very high. Now, what I do is I multiply the first column, this column with 100, the second column with 10, the third column with 1. So, 900 plus 70 plus 9 gets 979. Why? Because I have given it 100, 10 and 1, because now I know 979 means actually 9, 9 score for recency, 7 score for frequency and 9 score for monetary. That particular information is stored here by giving 100 weightage and 10 weightage. You might say that I am giving very high weightage to recency. Actually, this guy is not giving any weightage. We will later see that how some weightages which are meaningful can be given. Right now, I am just writing 979. For this guy, it is 899. So, 899, 299, so 299, 194, so 194 and similarly, the score is getting created. Now, once this score has been created, I will create the preference based on uh, the I will rank them. So, whoever has the highest score he will get a rank of 1, whoever has the lowest score he will get a rank, rank of uh, whatever number of customers that I have. So, here you will see that the most preferred guy is customer number 1 and then customer number 2, then customer number 3, then the fourth preference is customer number 5 and uh, fifth preference is customer number 4 and sixth preference is customer number 6. So, this is how I am actually adorning these guys based on the preferences. Now, if I focus on customer number 4 and customer number 5 just check 194 and 221. Now, the guy who has 194 has much higher frequency and monetary then customer number 5, 9, 4 and 2, 1. Just check this 2 is much higher than this 2, but still this guy will get lower preference and this guy will get higher preference because this guy is more recent. According to the technique that I were, I am using right now, so we are using right now, this 2, 2, 1 guy will get more preference than 194. So, here we are saying that recency is the topmost story, it has huge importance. But in real life many people may want to argue with that and we will talk about that later as we come up. RFM for measuring of performance of salesperson, this is also another application of RFM. RFM analysis of salespersons gives clear idea to managers about how well they are performing. Analysis by comparing total generated revenue that is the monetary part and salesperson's performance is possible by finding weakness possible decision making regarding training, promotion or employment ter termination is possible. So, you can rank like you rank the customers, you can also rank the salesperson based on how recently he got an order, how many got order he has got and what is the total volume his of his order. So, RFN is not useful for companies who provide unique pro products which are not purchased in large quantities that is something is another important factor. Now, if I compare this technique with some other predictive model, what are the various various places where it is advantageous? So, RFM is easy for managers where predictive models are black box basically, can build it yourself. So, you can build it yourself as a, as a manager, here you have to hire a statistician or a trained data miner, can build it yourself obviously and then again requires a building process which analysis and validates data set. 
In RFA you can have uh, portable across industries, the same thing can be applied, the same technique can be applied across industries which cannot be done in case of a predictive model. So, one particular model that you develop is very contextual, you cannot use in another specific context and then uh, somewhat effective at mitigating the uh, confounding effect of seasonality, here the seasonality has an issue. RFM definition is stable and does not need to rebuilt or redefined. On the other hand, other hand here for predictive models typically would need to be rebuilt every 2 years. So, you have to re, re, recalib, uh, uh, I would say re, re, rebuild your model, you have to find out the parameter estimates once more, uh, recalibrate the model basically. Applies to all the customers and support sortation of all customers in the database. And this one does not always apply to all customers, because the customer uh, segments might be different. And RFM can use, you can use RFM across the organization for reactivation or cross selling, on the other hand additional models would be required for reactive and cross sell segment programs in case of predictive models. So, there are certain ease, ease of use related, implementation related, generalizability related advantages that RFM has over predictive models. When we talk about recency, I have till now discussed the time, the time distance phase. Now, the recency variable has major, major I would say usage. For example, when last purchase date you, you combine with, with frequency and monetary, you can do a RFM analysis. On the other hand, last web data, web date. So, last time you have, you, you, somebody has seen in your web. And if you can compact with the last store visit of that particular person, then you know that each channel's recency in what combination will describe a customer segment. So, how customers are channel specific, you can segment them. And if you can find out the corporate recency, means when he has purchased, then, then if it is identical that web date and corporate recency is very close, then he has purchased based on that web visit. But if that purchase has some difference between them or you did not see the purchase, then probably he has searched in your, in your uh, platform and bought from somewhere else. So, that is a, uh, that is basically a lost sales and you have to reactivate those kind of customers. So, division 1 recency and division 2 recency, if the if two products have different recency, then there is a chances of cross selling. The individual recency versus household recency, then min, mill one per household. So, let us say if individual recency and household recency are close, that means any purchase from one household and any purchase from one individual, that recency is close, that means that is the person who is making a decision. So, you focus on that person, you send one mail rather than sending mails to everybody in the household. Similarly, individual recency with site recency, uh, that is not something that we will discuss now. Your company's recency versus your co, uh, co, uh, competitors or co, co corporate recency, then that is also reactivation. And then there are lots of such kind of things that recency can lead to, you can uh, read them up. And if you do not understand any one combination, for example, it is a recency and products purchased. People who bought X also bought Y. So, this can this kind of recommendation system can be created. So, last time you bought. Uh, uh, x and then bot y. You can combine these two data set and create a recommendation engine. So, all of these kind of combinations can create some kind of managerial insight, which we can also focus on. It has been seen actually empirically, why recency frequency monetary came in? It has been seen the people whose last purchase is very close, see if you see that their purchase revenue, their margin etcetera is much, much higher when the purchase is recent versus the purchase is very far away. So, from best to worst if you come down that is basically from recent to past and that can be seen in case of the revenue generated. So, this is basically sales per piece that means, how much money you generate per piece that is also high when it is lower. And the overall margin is also high when you buy, when your purchase distance is lower, that means time distance is lower, that means you have bought something very recently. Then the margin is high, 
sales per piece is high means the revenue per piece is also high and overall revenue is also high. So, generally that is why we focus so much on recency. And generally when we create RFM, if you see the best RFM guys are here, their sales per piece is much much higher than probably almost uh, in an average probably 20, 30 times higher than the worst guys. So, if you can find out that who are the best guys in case of RFM analysis, you are actually targeting the good customers and you can use that in the later period of time. Now, I told that there are alternative models, the same thing, but the calculation, the ultimate calculation after finding out the R score, F score and M score, I have given 100, 10 and 1 weightage. Somebody might say that how can you give that 100, 10 and 1 weightage? You should give some weightages which are more meaningful. So, one professor uh, 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 which is uh, Kuni L. Boyer uh, in general of direct marketing in 1988. So, that is why I am saying old concept, but it is still very used. So, he has written a paper on a direct mail customer purchase model and he told that RFM score should be 1 by R into F into root over of M. But now, still if you just do calculation, R has the highest effect on RFM score. Delta R, delta RFM by delta R might be much higher than other ones, but still I am giving opposite. So, here R is recency that means that the distance between. So, 1 by R means the higher the distance, the lower will be the RFM score. So, R has been defined differently here and then F is the numbers of purchase and M is the monetary value and R is in months, not in days. So, that is something that we have to remember. So, 1 by R into F into root over of M and then you get the RFM score and again you just probably create a sort from and in a decreasing order. So, higher the RFM score, the better is the customer in terms of the profitability. Alternative method, you can also use recreation techniques. So, you can use R, F, M and ultimate profitability as your Y variable, do a regression and find out what is the weightage that is coming for recency, what is the weightage that is coming for frequency, what is the weightage that is coming for monetary and use that weightage for the ultimate RFM score analysis. So, this is what have, they have given. So, 20 is within past 2 months, they have given points, 10 is within 4 months and 5 if within 6 months, 3 points if within 9 months and 1 point if within 12 months. So, that is how the scoring has been done and the relative weightage for recency score has been given 5. So, that gives the weighted points. So, 1 you will see that the recency months and corresponding points assigned has been written. Assi points assigned into 5 gives me the weighted points. Similar thing they did for frequency here the weight is 2 and the scores are for 3 points for uh, each purchase within 12 months and maximum up to 15 points. So, that is how they have done the frequency and the monetary is monetary value is 10 percent of the dollar volume of purchase within 12 months maximum 25 they give a cut off and the relative weightage is 3. So, that is how they have calculated the weighted points for monetary also. So, ultimately when I find out the weighted point for recency frequency monetary, I have just add them up and then the cumulative point whoever is higher. Uh, uh, so, whoever is higher comes at the top most, most uh, I would say uh, preferred customer and whoever is lower comes as the least preferred customer and the cumulative points will actually talk about who is more preferred, who is less preferred. So, John seems to be a good prospect, but mailing to Smith might be a misdirect uh, effort because Smith has very low uh, weighted total weighted points also and cumulative points also. So, that is how we do RFM analysis and these are some of the reference from which I have used certain contents and certain ideas as well and thank you. In the next video, we will talk about how to do RFM analysis in a in, a, in R actually with a real data set. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.